Hello and welcome to another Blender Bite Size video. In this one I'll be showing you how to create this kind of ravaged paint or peeled paint effect in Blender 4. Here's what I'll be using. Blender 4.2, Windows 11, Nvidia graphics card, Cycles Render Engine and a custom startup file which I've got a separate video for if you'd like to see that. Just before I continue with the tutorial, let me remind you that you can grab this material and hundreds more on my Gunroad store, blenderbitesize.gunroad.com. Okay, so here we are in the scene. I've got my object, a couple of lights, uh, the camera, and obviously a room with some lights built into the walls. I'm switching over to the shading tab and I've got display render preview already enabled. I'm selecting the object and I'm clicking on new to assign a new material. So we've got the principled shader there, which we'll be using in a minute, but I'm going to press shift A and search for a texture coordinate, if I could spell it right. And I'm going to connect the object output from there into the surface detail of the material output, and that's just temporary just so that I can see what's happening with the texture as I'm working on it. I'm going to connect a noise texture between those two. Change that to 4D and the W value of 0.8. Scale of 5, detail of 5 and leave everything else as it is. Then I'm going to search for a math node. Plonk that just after the noise texture and switch it to power. And then I'll use the exponent and set it to 0.9. And then get a color ramp. Connect that in between. Change that to constant. And move the second color spot to 0.5. Then I'm going to select all three. Press Shift P. N to expand the little section on the right and give it a label of mask. And this is what's going to control the visibility between the rusty texture and the paint itself. So I'm going to duplicate the principal shader because I want two materials. Then I'm going to uh, mix those two together in a minute. But I'll start with the top one. And I'm going to connect the power node into the base color and get myself a color ramp, pop that in between those two. And then I'll switch that to ease. Set the first color spot to white and put it in position 0.475, add a second or third color spot and change that to black, so a value of zero, and move that to position 0.5, and then move that last color spot to 0 0.605. And you can see now we've got a really cool um, graduated texture. Then I'm gonna get a mixed color node and pop that in between the color ramp and the principal shader. Change that to multiply, factor of one. And I'm actually going to move that color ramp into the B slot. And then for the A slot, I'm going to start by adding a gamma node. Set that to 0.9. And then from the color slot, I'm going to connect up another color ramp. I'm going to set the first color value using a hex code 43230F and set that to position 0 0.005. I'll add another color stop, set the color value to 440F0F and set that to position 0 0.445, 445, 
And for the last color stop, A15D30. And set that pos to position 0.564. And you can see we've now got a nice rusty texture going on already. I'm going to connect that color ramp to a noise texture using the color output. Set the scale to 2.2, detail to 15 and roughness to 1. And then I'm going to connect the texture input to a texture coordinate using the object output. Now I could have connected it to the original one and I probably will in a minute. But we're going to uh, move those over. And then, like I say, I'll just connect up that original one. I don't need two. So from that uh, color mix, I'm going to add another math node and set it to power. Set the exponent to one and connect that up to the normal. But to convert that into the appropriate data, I'm going to slide in a bump node in between and move that connector to the height. Invert it so it's pressing inwards. And if I show you what's happening there. And I'll set the roughness to 0.75 on the principal shader. I'll just move that mask back a bit. And then I will frame all of those nodes at the top and name it Rust. That's what's giving us our Rust texture. That's what you'll see underneath the peeled paint. <clears throat> so I'm going to add a mix shader between the two principal shaders. And I'm going to connect up the mask from the color, out, uh, color ramp into the factor. So you can see now that that isolates that rust texture according to the mask. And then now we'll work on the paint. So we need to assign color and also bump detail to get that sort of peeling effect. So we'll connect up the texture coordinate to the base color. And then press Shift A and search for a noise texture. Put that in between the two. Then we'll get ourselves uh, a math node. Set it to add. Set the second value to 0.25. Then we'll grab a mix color node and put those two, the noise and the add, into the factor. We'll set the first color hex value to CBC B39, and the second one to 646417. Basically, these are two colors that will represent your paint. We want just a variation in color slightly according to the noise texture to give us a slightly aged look. We don't want pristine uniform color. So next up, we again drag out uh, from the value of the power node in the mask section and give ourselves a color ramp. And this color ramp uh, is going to give us some additional detail for the bump. We're going to set the first value as white and set it to 0.499 on position. We'll add another color stop, set it to black and set it at 0.5. And then the last color stop we will set as a position of 0.56. And we're going to connect that up to a math node set to power. And we're going to set the exponent to 2. We'll connect that up to a bump node using the height input. 
and then this we're going to take into the normal of the principled shader. We need to invert it so it's pushing outwards from the object. And then we're going to expand the coat section of the principled shader, set that to 1. Now that gives us a glossy coat, but it's uniform, so it kind of goes over. So we need to add that bump detail to the normal of that coat as well, so it follows the surface. We'll frame that and we'll name it Paint. Now we've got all the major factors in, but in the coat I'm going to set the roughness to 0.25, so it's not totally glossy but it does look like a, you know, a, ref a reflective paint. I can't even say the word. Now you can change the exponent on the mask to control how detailed the exposure is of the rust. If you try and change the color ramp, it will actually uh, not be correct. It needs to be set at 0.5. The top color ramp for the rust doesn't change too much. And the W value just changes the overall pattern of the mask. And the scale obviously decreases the scale. So you get more rust coming through. I'm just playing with all these to show you kind of what each one does. And the roughness gives you much more bubbling in the paint. So there we have all the key elements. We have the rust, the paint and the mask. And that's all controlling those. So you can play around with those settings to create the look that you want. But basically we've got the rust and obviously the mask is controlling uh, where that's visible and you can see how that looks like it's bubbling up away from the outer edge of the um, peeling paint. Anyway, these are the render settings that I use for this. I've got denoising enabled. I've got various different uh, additional settings. Obviously, feel free to pause and rewind if you need to. And then in the compositor, I have a despeckle and a denoise node. I have found that, by the way, switching those gives a slightly better result. But let's give you a look at this one. And that came in at just under 10 seconds for that render. And obviously, I played around with the settings and you can assign different colors to the paint as well. Anyway. That's it for this one. I hope you've enjoyed it and will make use of it. Please remember to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe for future content, and of course, uh, leave any questions or comments in the usual places. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching.